Midoriya, good morning. Are you headed off to your work study too? Look at these I'm special so kids doing all these yeah, special things with their time. Like it's been forever. I wonder why they said not to wear our costumes though. Oh. Oh. Good morning, guys. You going in today? Yeah. Oh, so are we. That's kind of weird. All right, there's something brewing. Some kind of assembly. Work study student assembly for heroes. What a coincidence, us too. It's yeah, okay. It's Everyone's not a coincidence, but all right, Sue. <laughs> Sue's usually so quick to pick things up. Going in the same direction. They're really hyping, hyping this up, building up the tension for this Ew. thing. <laughs> the big three are all here. Things just got a lot more interesting. <laughs> Gran Torino. And oh Mr. no. Izawa? Oh, Aizawa's here. All these incredible people in the same room. From big what an honor. To more minor local heroes. This is amazing. What also is dangerous. Happening? It must be big. Yeah, it's I... huge. And intro. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? Wait a minute and a half while enjoying an amazing opening? I'm not sure what this assembly is going to be about, but I can imagine, or maybe at least hope, that it's some kind of like meeting to address the growing villain concerns and maybe some kind of unification pact among the heroes. You know what I mean? Or more specifically to the events in the show right now. Since we haven't seen him yet, it's possible that this is actually an event spearheaded by Night Eye in connection with the growing case with Overhaul and Shigaraki. You too, Mr. Aizawa? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how Aizawa being here adds so much gravity to the event. That's how you know it's legit. Remember what I told you, girls? Students or not, you've already proved yourselves to be valuable assets. Right, she did say that. have a role for you in a new case that's come up. Right, okay. And there's Lenai. Regarding the Yakuza group Shie Hasaikai, and what we believe they might be planning. Dramatic speed lines uh, intensify. Like I'm missing something really important here. Shie, ho what now? Some bad guys are planning to do some bad things. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> You two are very much involved. What's the situation on his power right now? Back, I guess. Fully recovered. What prompted this? An accident involving a gang of thieves called the Reservoir Dogs. Are they the ones who stole that DVD display case? I began following leads to see what I could uncover. They made contact with a member of the League of Villains, Jean Bubagawara. Villain name? Twice. twice right. But with the help of the police. I confirmed that an altercation had occurred between the two groups. What gave it away that an altercation occurred there? But actually, this is great detective work. Like, this is some of the best I've seen since since Cat Cop. I've got a bad feeling that things are about to get ugly. I don't care yes. if they do. I want to help. Hold up. You know him? Oh, Gran Torino? I did my internship with him. He looked That's up That's the old man who was with All Might and Camino. Did people not know? Oh, wow. Sorry. What's the HN? Stands for Hero Network. It's an online service that can only be accessed by pros. You can see what all the heroes in the country okay. are up to. And you can ask for help from people whose quirks might come a in new, handy. A new technicality to the show. A bunch of high school kids were invited to this conference? Well, I mean, exposition for one. But also, it's class UA. Like, Kirishima, for example, just went up against a bunch of these people and saved a whole lot of lives, it would seem. This doesn't at all feel to me like the kids are being put in a role they don't deserve. I think all the UA students in this room deserve to be there. I mean, they've all had first-hand experience. They've all proved themselves. In fact, that's why they have these work study things in the first place, right? It's not every student who can do this. It's just them, really. These two have important yeah, tell them, Fat Gum. To pass along. Uh, and important abilities. Do? I go. That was too much pressure for him. Anyway, yeah. I see a lot of new faces, so let me introduce myself. Nice to meet you. How do you not I'm know Fat Gum? <laughs> He's so cute and squishy. <laughs> he wants candy. Is he cute? Oh my god. <laughs> that was weird. Tamaki was shot, and the bullet contains some kind of drug I've never heard of before. Yeah, this is sort of it destroys quirks. Key, the candy continues. Tamaki, you're okay, right? Yeah, thank you for asking, Mirio. Good guy, Mirio. I've got this cow hoof and everything. I guess we know what you had for breakfast. I feel like his quirk is one of those things you need a strategy guide for. Like, the connection between what you eat and the result might not always be obvious. And there are like these random overpowered things, and then also things that you think would be overpowered that actually have no effect. I mean, here, eating beef gave him hooves, right? But why not like horns or udders or leathery skin? You know what I mean? And also, it raises some weird questions about like what he can eat. Given the fact that his quirk is food-based, does he still stick to normal human dietary habits? Like, what powers does human meat give you? I don't know, there's just so many weird questions. What happens when you combine things? Is there always the same exact result between animal you eat and bodily result? Are there any things that are harmful? Weirdly, just in my first impression of it, this ends up being one of the deepest quirks, but in like a very odd way. Glad the important thing is that he's fine. At least. Yeah, so yeah, that is huge. Quirk for good. No. Otherwise, we're getting to like Korra territory. What we call a quirk is oh, an extraordinary some... addition to an ordinary human body. Aizawa exposition. Those additions are collectively referred to as quirk genes. Quirk genes? We brought him to the hospital and they found that his quirk genes had sustained damage. 
Fortunately, okay. they seem to have healed on their own, and he's back to normal now. So I guess that was necessary for the explanation of what these things do. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot more to it because there's a bigger plan here. It's not just like we're going to remove quirks and then attack, right? I think, I feel. You gotta be careful with this sometimes in media, I think. Like, you don't always have to go that deep and explain the reasons behind things. At a certain point in a fantasy show, you just take things for granted and you're like, okay, they have quirks or whatever, right? A good example of where this goes wrong is like middle chlorians in Star Wars, right? It's like, we don't really need middle chlorians to believe in the Force. And speaking of Korra, some people feel that way about the the one origin stories, right? But I feel like in this case, while I don't know where they're going with it exactly, I feel like there are some interesting things they could do by adding this quirk gene thing. One is the villain's plot and whatever they're doing. Maybe things like gene transplant or genetic engineering or latent genes or like delayed expression of genes or things like that. You know what I mean? There's There are ways it could go, even though it might not be fully necessary. I mean, you could just have quirks, right? It'll just depend, I think, on, on where they go with it. What do we know about the substance he was shot with? Whatever it was didn't harm the rest of his body. It was targeted, targeted attack. However, Hiroshima bravely defended Tamaki yes, from a that bullet, is right. which he did. bounced off his own body and should now provide us with a viable sample. Oh, I did that? Do you not know? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as he, like, actually stepped it's up in the moment. It's hardening, right? Yeah, yeah, he's so key. He's so clutch right now. We discovered something that made me sick to my stomach. Drugs. It contained human blood and cells. Okay. That effect came from a person. From someone's, someone's quirk. Power. Is quirk it? That can destroy unicorn yours. girl? Unicorn girl. I'm not connecting the dots here. Unicorn girl, maybe. <laughs> The other day, Ryukyu's team broke up a fight between two villain groups. One of those groups was controlled by right. the intermediary organization that Fat Gum just mentioned. Huh. I like how all these things are connected. Like, we've seen the kids at their work studies, but I didn't realize that it was all part of this growing case. That gives even more reason why they're all here, I think. <gasps> their young head, Chisaki, Quirk Overhaul. With this power, he can disassemble things and then reassemble them. Oh my God! It's quirk alchemy. That allows him to completely break down matter. I thought it was just and destruction. A that can break down quirks. Wow. Who makes them by hand? That adds a really interesting personal touch to all these bullets. But that also just makes this quirk so much more interesting. I really thought it was just destruction from the way he like scratched to kill. That just adds a whole whole new upper bound on what he can do. <sighs> yes, yes, that's right. Finally, you realize what a big deal this is. It like doesn't matter what Please. any of your quirks are if this lands. I like that camaraderie, that silent camaraderie between the two of them. Hold on, what are they talking about? Once again, why do we have children in this meeting? For exposition. <laughs> At this point, their efficacy appears to be questionable. It's possible that they're still in the testing they're Testing phase, it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just giving them out as samples to rally more people to his cause. We have no hard evidence. Mirio and Deku are destroyed. Imagine the devastation he could cause. Right. Finally! <laughs> Would have saved us a lot of trouble if these two amateurs had just gotten the girl away from him. I take full this responsibility. This guy is not very nice. <laughs> the blame should not fall on them. They acted to save the child, each in their own way. Right, right. They did the best they could for them. And you can't blame either of them. They both did what they thought was right. You know. Save a million people? I couldn't even save her! Oh no. And, and we'll protect, protect her! her. I also love their response. That's precisely what we've come here to discuss. Nice. All right, I'm on board. I like how their their focus is on the girl, not on the danger to themselves, right? Like, I think big picture, one takeaway from this is like, we're all in danger. But they're like, yeah, that's true. But also our duty to help this one person, you know? There's really no point discussing like, who's more deserving in this question of like, Deku or Mirio, right? It's both of them. My sense just gets more and more firm on this, that Mirio doesn't necessarily need to be the successor of one for all. I mean, he could just be one million or whatever his name is and just kick ass with Deku. Like, let's let's prioritize. You know what I'm saying? The title doesn't matter. The number one thing doesn't matter. You know, that's that's just sort of vanity. The thing that matters is the good that you do, right? And doing the best you can do in a way that's authentic and, and natural and healthy for you. Which interestingly, it wasn't totally for All Might. And this is sort of great for me because I, I felt this conflict about that moment as Deku did because I really love Mirio. I love his disposition. I love his abilities. I love the fact that he started from the bottom and now is here. I love the way he worked really hard. But that was uncomfortable for me to see him and Deku sort of being at odds because I like Deku quite a bit as well, you know? And this was a really nice way of framing it and also helped me appreciate Night Eye more because Night Eye recognizes they both did the best, their best in the best way they knew how to at that moment, which I think is true. I think that is the right assessment of it. And I think, or maybe hope that the end result of this is that Deku and Mirio have just united in a deeper and more common way where this is sort of proof and confirmation that they're both very, very much aligned in the way that matters, which is actually helping people. Doing the good that they can see instead of focusing on like these grandiose things. In fact, you know, now that I think about it, 
right? It's never really been Mirio at all who's been talking about being this great symbol or being some kind of successor or having people love him, right? His focus has been on helping a million people, saving lives. So even though it's a painful moment of reflection, it fosters a sense of love and confidence in me for the two of them and also for their relationship. Speaking of which... What am I looking at? We'll save her! What a duo, too. We won't let her down. Huh. You kids want to talk big, that's fine. <laughs> the success of our initial strike is crucial. To that end, we've made a yeah, you thorough get one list chance, of right? groups with connections to Hasaikai. Didn't expect someone who worked with All Might for so long to be such a careful planner. Let's just go bring him down! While we're taking our sweet time, that <laughs> this amused guy. girls sweet out time. there crying somewhere! We can't do this like All Might would. Interesting. Coming from him who used to work with All Might. You're thinking too dang much! If yeah. we keep sitting here yapping about it, we're never gonna get anything done! Excuse me? They're not just yapping though, they will I actually a question. execute things. Yes, listen to the man. Listen to Aizawa. Your quirk foresight allows you to see into the future. Yeah, Why yeah. Use it on us. Yeah, it's a great question. But he has a limit to how much he can use it, right? My foresight has some limitations. Right. I need a full 24 hours between activations. Right. Think of it like viewing a film strip. This is more important technicalities. Everything I see is from a tight perspective on the person in question. This severely limits my capacity to interpret context. That should still provide more than enough information to be useful, don't you think? Yeah, but... It doesn't explain why you can't do it. It does make some sense, though. I mean, to look at everyone in this room would take months, right? And you also are relying on the fact that the people themselves, the people of whom you're viewing, have proper understanding of the situation they're in and aren't, like, blindsided and knocked out or killed or something like that. But there's probably more to it as well. What if I saw imminent death in your near future? Worse. What if it were a cruel, merciless demise? Yeah, I wonder what he knows that he's not telling people. My quirk should be employed only after we've confirmed the highest likelihood of success. Then it can help ensure our victory. That makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. That's the only excuse you have for real? Oh, hell no. Just use it on me now. I'll show you I can beat death. <laughs> Alright, All Might. <laughs> Respect the energy, though. I feel like just people knowing about his quirk is such a vulnerability. People must be just after him all the time. He does, you know, bear a pretty heavy burden. We must confirm the girl's location and take her into our protection as quickly as possible using the most accurate data. He also cares about the girl. A lot of them do. That's really nice. It's reassuring. She was right there too, in in his hands, but there's no way he could have known. No, don't go down this road. At least she'd be safe. But he didn't know. Oh man. So that's what happened that day? <laughs> Student council so meeting. Frustrating. Yep, you know it you is. Tried, Deku. Yeah. You know, like, this is a weird thing, but I think that one way to judge conduct, one way to judge choices is by outcome, and that's reasonable. But weirdly, I think having a bad outcome of a choice doesn't make the choice wrong, and having a good outcome from the choice doesn't make that choice right. There's an element of randomness to things, and the more unknowns there are, the more murky that gets. And I think another way of looking at it is just like, well, what choices in unknown situations will most often lead to good results, or will not compromise certain values, or will allow you to feel good about yourself? In this case, if we're judging by circumstances, to Deku, it can seem like the wrong choice because he didn't save the girl. And we now know that she was worth saving and that she is contributing to this plan and that she's probably undergoing some in incredible trauma from overhaul but going back to that time that moment where it was unknown mirio and night eye were right that it was very very possible that going after her in that moment would have done way way more harm than good and unraveled everything and so deku's choice was in action and that was painful and i think a lot of times inaction is the most unsatisfying result but oftentimes is like the most reasonable one given unknown variables and maybe one very simple way of looking at the question of who was right or wrong between Deku and Mirio, the answer was neither of them. The person who was wrong was Overhaul. And so Deku and Mirio were just reacting in the best way they knew how, given limited information, and so there was no right answer, if that makes sense. I've never seen Mirio look so down before. Right? That's we're it's really weird. This Chisaki bastard is turning his daughter's body into bullets and selling them on the black Damn, market. Damn, look at that face. Poor Eri. I didn't know he was capable of sad expressions. Before you got involved in this, I was going to recommend that your work studies be suspended. What? Right, I remember that. He didn't say it was him, necessarily, but he's saying this, but you know he believes in them. Muriel, please, will you try to smile? Hey, hey, I know what'll help you. Just remember, regretting something and getting frowny doesn't change things. You know it? Yeah. I mean, use it, I guess. 
Just because you didn't hold on to her this time, doesn't mean you didn't give Aerie hope. So keep looking forward. Good advice. I'm your man for the rest of my life, Eraser. <sighs> oh damn, he just took it to 11. I love it though. Don't change Kirishima. <laughs> Next time we'll definitely save her. Right! Yeah, this is more like it. You sent Midoriya to me in the hopes that he would help mend my relationship with All Might. <laughs> I thought it would give you an excuse to talk, at least. Gran Torino is such a meddler. What are your honest thoughts about him? I think he and All Might are very similar. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Especially Some honesty. Especially when it comes to the madness living deep within. <laughs> Nailed it. I see that in them both. Yeah, Nodeku is, is an excellent successor. And as I've said, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters who's the actual successor to All Might. But if we are going down that route, if we are talking about that, then I think actually Deku is probably closer. Because it's not just fitting into this narrow mold of like being the ultimate hero, being the symbol of peace. It's more like being an innovator of what the world is and what people expect in a way that's useful. And so Deku has a drive that's as big as All Might's, which means he's going to, in his way, surpass All Might. Not as All Might, but as Deku. But I love that joint Aizawa and Big 3 pep talk, sort of refocusing on what's important, because that is sort of how it goes, right? Like, if there's a, a setback like that or a moment like that where you feel like you failed, that seems like it's a it's a stamp. It's like a mark on what you are and something that will forever affect the future. But the truth is, it's just one one blip in the story, and they're gonna get another chance at it. As long as they don't melt down and just like fall into despair and, and give up hope. You can even imagine this being overall a good opportunity for them to sort of reflect. And also now I feel like they're a lot stronger as a group. Another end credit scene. Look happy, or I might be the one who gets killed next time, you brat. See, I'm not scary. <laughs> Is there anything you want me to bring you? Freedom. Bring me freedom. So strange. So completely different. She felt it. The Deku power. He felt so kind. And this is exactly what Aizawa just said, right? He did give her hope. It'll be interesting to keep track of how that interaction affected her and what she'll do in the future. That seems to suggest that she's more than just sort of like a, a pawn in the story, that she actually is going to have her own role to play. This was the, I guess, in some way, the first sort of development we've seen for her. So that was an interesting episode. It was a lot of exposition and sort of world building and reflection and a chance for the heroes to catch up to where I think the audience has been, realizing the threat that's been growing and sort of understanding they need to get on the same page and also wondering what the next form of hero society will look like in light of the, the growing threat. But also some really great stuff coming out of it, like Deku and Mirio's growing bond, even though it was sort of unspoken spoken. It's kind of awesome. And Aizawa being there for the kids. And so now it'll be really interesting to see where this goes, because I'm guessing starting from next episode, or at least soon, the operation will begin. But yeah, that's the end of episode six. I'll see you guys next time when Cat Cop lends a hand. <laughs>